What's up everyone, in today's video I'm going to walk you through my desk setup and show you guys the place where I edit all the videos you find on this channel. I think you'll find some of my choices rather unusual, but I'll explain why I've chosen to create this particular setup. So first let's address this giant 43 inch curved monitor from Samsung. Yes, I'm totally overcompensating for something, but that's not important right now. This monitor was not my first choice and is actually a gaming monitor, but I have found the curved screen to be really immersive for video editing. Colors are not perfect on the screen, so I do tend to open up my MacBook Pro if I am color grading. I chose this monitor as it seemed like the best choice at the time given my limited options here in South Africa, and I wanted a monitor that had Thunderbolt USB-C ports so that I could have a single cable running as both a power supply and a display cable to my MacBook Pro. However, when I did so, this completely fried all the ports in my MacBook Pro, which is extremely disappointing, so now I run a separate HDMI cable and power supply cable into a Nextech adapter, and this seems to do the trick just fine. My screen is mounted on the F45 monitor arm from North Bayou, which gives it that nice floating feeling on my desk. I must say I've been really impressed with this monitor arm and how easily I can move and rotate my screen on my desk to whichever way I please. Next up, we have the workhorse that creates all the magic. It's a fully specced out 16 inch MacBook Pro with a four terabyte SSD. I chose the four terabytes so that I'd never have to edit off external hard drives ever again while traveling. And honestly, it's been worth every cent. Because of how much I travel, using a laptop still makes the most sense for someone like me versus having a desktop computer. I put my MacBook in a stand from Mac Alley to give my desk a nice clean finish. This product works great, but is a complete ripoff in my opinion and there are definitely more affordable options out there. This however was my only choice at the time when trying to find one in South Africa. Now onto what I would consider the most important and valuable item of the whole setup which is my 8 bay NAS from QNAP. If you don't know what a NAS is, to put it simply, it's basically the mother of all hard drives that can also be linked to the internet so you can access it from anywhere at any time. My footage is my most valuable asset so I figured a good NAS setup was going to be the best and safest way to store all of my content in one place. I chose QNAP as its features seemed best suited for me and I also liked how I could use a Thunderbolt USB-C cable to connect it to my MacBook Pro instead of an Ethernet cable. So having a good NAS enclosure is only half of the story here. I've put four 16 terabyte Iron Wolf Pro NAS drives from Seagate into the QNAP which Seagate have been kind enough to sponsor for this video. Seagate has always been the leader in this field and has the most extensive range of NAS drives. Not to mention the incredible read and write speed to get with these drives. Honestly, they are faster than the SSDs I travel with, which I didn't even know was possible. Another great benefit with Seagate is their rescue data recovery. The Iron Wolf Pro comes with the extra peace of mind for any mechanical, accidental or natural disaster with a 90% success rate of in-house recovery. Basically, Seagate has your back with a three year included rescue data recovery plan, which is pretty incredible. These hard drives are built to withstand a workload rate of 300 terabytes per year, which is more than I'll ever be able to put them through. So the fact that I'm using them for storage might seem like complete overkill, but honestly, it gives me great peace of mind that my footage is going to be really safe. So if you are looking at investing in a storage setup like a RAID or NAS, I would definitely recommend Seagate as your choice of drives for the best and safest experience possible. And now very quickly for the real tech nerds out there, I did not set up my drives in a RAID configuration. Instead, I created a storage volume with three of the drives where I store all of my footage and then I use the fourth drive as a time machine backup for my Mac. I back up everything to Dropbox just in case my apartment burns down or is broken into. I figured that statistically speaking, the chances of a hard drive failing are so small that I'd rather maximize my storage space and use Dropbox than have a RAID configuration. This would most likely change in the future when I get more drives. Now onto the one item that gets quite a few comments every time I post a video with my work setup. I use the express keyboard tray from Bullet Train to hold the Apple Magic keyboard and trackpad and then I have the Premiere Pro shortcut skin on top of the keyboard from Xskin. Because I have always edited and worked on a MacBook, I haven't used a mouse in years and honestly I feel more comfortable using the trackpad with its great intuitive design. So I got the tray so that my setup would feel just like my laptop and basically keep my muscle memory the same between my desk setup and my MacBook for when I'm editing on the go, which is actually most of the time. Next up, I use a GoPro as a webcam. Honestly, never really thought I would use this feature with the GoPro, but since my MacBook is closed in the stand when I'm working at home and my monitor doesn't have a built-in webcam, the GoPro makes for an epic wide-angle high-res webcam when I'm on video calls. So yeah, pretty cool feature on the GoPro. 
And speaking of editing on the go, one of the coolest editing accessories I've found recently is the Espresso Portable Display. It is completely powered by a laptop and works with a Thunderbolt USB-C cable. It's been really awesome having an additional screen while traveling and working on the go. And to anyone who works the remote life, I would definitely recommend checking them out. They even have touchscreen functionality too. And honestly, I don't think there is a better portable display on the market right now with this quality in this price range. So with all this time in front of screens editing, I use blue light blocking glasses from Movement to reduce the strain on my eyes. I currently have perfect eyesight and I plan on keeping it that way. I use the Maluti Height Adjustable Desk from Entrawood. Having a stand-up desk has been an amazing experience and it's been great being able to work while either sitting or standing. The desk also has a really nice cable management tray which is honestly such an underrated feature and really makes life a lot easier. When standing I use the anti-fatigue mat from Desk Stand which basically just makes standing for longer periods of time a lot more comfortable. And lastly, I also have a Wi-Fi extender in my room to boost my internet speeds. The nice thing about this one is it also has an ethernet port which I can plug directly into my NAS so it always remains connected to the internet. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and the behind the scenes look into my work from home office. It's been really cool creating this setup over the last year. I've watched countless desk and at home office setup videos before creating my own. So if you think of doing it, I hope this video has helped out in some way. Thanks again to Seagate for sponsoring this video. I'll have a link in the description below if you're looking at getting some hard drives or SSDs. I would personally recommend the Lacey SSD if you're looking for a portable storage solution that is going to be extremely reliable, fast and convenient. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.